Good morning again, everyone. Welcome back again to the KSR YouTube channel. A little bit of a secret, it's actually night. Kind of thought this video would be better shot without all the noises of the shop. Uh, it's been really crazy and hectic and busy here during the day while uh, Dick's been working on the dart. I've had Travis in working on the El Camino with me and CJ's been doing other stuff here around the shop. But as you can see, we've got a little bit more work done on mullet. Actually, there's been a ton of work done on mullet, but it doesn't look like a lot of work has been done on mullet just because sometimes to make things look simple actually takes quite a bit of time and effort to make it look just seamless. And that's what kind of what we strive for around here. You can see we switched to a containment seat for Mr. Cletus. And we've been working on mounting the, the new seatbelt tabs. You can see we've got the spare or the passenger seat over there. But we've been working on uh, the seatbelt anchors for both locations. There weren't any acre. Bleh. There were not any anchors in the passenger side of the car. So we moved the driver's seat over there, added both mounts and anchors which, you know, the car was painted on the inside. So I had to go back and scrape off all the paint and clean it down to good metal and anchor seats to the roll cage. I don't like anchoring stuff just to the floor. So the seats and the belts are anchored to the roll cage on both sides. And you can see we've done a little bit more work up here in the front, got our pipes on. We started plumbing uh, the boost controller and the way we do the dome pressure control stuff uh, we start with this. This plums into the bottom of the wastegate, and then we will plumb air pressure to the top. Now this fin this fitting here is just to keep junk out of there for now. The boost controller is going to measure and adjust the pressure in the top, which if you can imagine there's a valve in here. So when the valve is being pushed shut, it's going to push the air up to the turbo and make it go wee. So for those of you that don't know, this valve, you kind of tune it to float until you're, until you're maxing out your turbo and you just pin the sucker shut. But I don't think we're gonna be there for a little while with these turbos. Uh, these are some pretty sporty precision turbos ball bearing i believe they're 85 86s and uh pretty rowdy turbos so what i'm going to do in this video is kind of focus on some of my methodologies for wiring and kind of show you how i go about planning to wire a car and then starting the execution of completely wiring a car so stay tuned and we'll get to it All right, so before we get started, um, I did see some comments from some people in some of the last videos that our merch site was having some problems. So we went ahead and found out that it was, we had clicked something wrong that related to international shipping. So we think we've got that fixed. Uh, please check it out, let us know if we haven't. For those of you that don't know, we do have some merch on winwithksr.com. And while you're here, if you like the kind of stuff we're doing, please subscribe to the channel. Check your subscription if you thought you were subscribed. I know not everybody gets unsubscribed. I've been unsubscribed from some channels that I watch. And if it's happening to me and I know I'm not doing it on purpose, maybe it's happened to you. But please subscribe, click the notification bell, and we've got lots more stuff coming, both with Mullet, Bradenton, Cletus, and Cars. It's two and a half weeks out. We got some work to do. All right, so the first thing we should go over is what all kind of parts we are going to be putting into mullet. You guys know we have Holly Dominator ECU. We are also running their extra injector module to run two sets of injectors. And then we're running the Holly 8 EGT module so that we can monitor EGTs, 
this module runs or brings all of the information in through the CAN system. So it does not use up any of the inputs and outputs in the dominator. And if you guys know much of me, you know that I have planned to fill this car out full of sensors. I've kind of started working on the base tune and where I have all of my inputs and outputs going and we're almost used up with a Holly Dominator. And for those of you that know Holly, that's a lot of sensors and inputs and outputs and all kinds of good stuff. So, Dominator ECU. We're starting with an unterminated main harness. This is the kit for the EGTs, which if you guys come look right over here, you can see that we have installed them into the headers. You know, you guys know I'm not going to leave these all long. So we're actually doing a custom uh, little 3D printed receptacle that's going to put all four of them kind of right here for this side. And then there'll be four on the other side. And we're going to shorten each of these so it's nice looking and not just all wrapped up in a big mess. You guys know I don't like messes. It's gotta be pretty and functional and fast. All right, so you can see how each of them, I've routed them so that we will be able to access the plug wires nice and easily. There's a little bit of a gap between each of these. On the back side of the firewall, we have another harness to take care of. So this harness goes from the module up to our firewall connectors. And yep, I'm gonna cut these up and shorten them too. Because I'm gonna make it nice. All right, next box. We've got the injector driver module. So this will plug into the injector driver that's on our little board. Yeah, carbon fiber. So we're gonna be wiring this into, well, there's one set of injectors in the main harness, which is in this box. But then these are what's going to be our injector connectors. And so if you guys remember, I had talked about in a previous video that I was going to make it possible to just unplug and switch the injector harnesses. So it's the same exact injector on the street side of the fuel system and the race side of the fuel system. Let's us mix and match. If we have an injector go down, we can you know, we can keep, uh, we can keep going just by moving some injectors around, but also by doing this and keeping the injector size the same, we can fill the front mount fuel cell that has the race gas in it. Normally we will be able to flip the wiring around on the firewall, fill the front mount fuel cell that's normally full of race gas. We'll fill it up full of pump gas, flush it out with some non-ethanol, uh, just pump gas. And then that way the car can be stored for a while without having to worry about any um, like water moisture getting inside of the injectors and causing any damage to the injectors, any corrosion in the fuel lines, et cetera, et cetera. So what I plan to do is basically, there's gonna be two of these stacked right above each other on the firewall. And this back orange, you won't be able to see. And basically we'll be able to unplug. They'll be wired the same each injector set will be wired the same on this side. And we'll just plug those in. It's weather tight. This is a Deutsch connector. And I pick up these from wirecare.com. All right, next box. Main power and ground for the Holly ECU. For those of you that are new to Holly, when Holly says to go directly to the battery with these wires, you go directly to the battery with these wires. So with these modern fuel injection systems, you've got all this electrical stuff happening. Potentially, that can create some noise. And you do not want that noise in the main power and ground. So you run those directly to the battery and the battery acts as like a filter or a damper to get rid of 
all the stuff that we don't want affecting the other sensors, especially stuff like the cam and crank sensor, because if you get some weirdness there, bad things happen. You get cylinders that are firing when they shouldn't be firing, bad things, don't do that. All right, so the last box, and this is the one that is very intimidating for a lot of people. That is our main harness. You can see Holly, the way we buy these, Holly sends it where it's terminated at the ECU in. There's our different, we got O2 cam and crank there. So this may look very intimidating to the, to the average person. And it can be, but Holly has stuff available both through their website to where you can look at the entire harness. And I'll show you one of my little tricks is we took the file that's available from Holly, get my shadow out of the way here, and printed it out. So you can see there's that plug and then we have a listing of every single every single wire and then you can follow the map over here and see where every connector every connector in the engine harness goes now with a dominator some of you may know there are lots of harnesses available We've got our main engine harness ones go here and then all these are extra inputs and outputs. So one thing that I plan to do for this build, and we've tried to do it a little bit with some of our other builds, every single plug that we do, not only will it be listed in the Holly pin map, but I plan to have like a wiring breakdown that'll be either printed and on, on board with the car. I've got a a box that I plan to build that's gonna have like some spare parts in it that are, that'll are that always stay with the car. So I try to do different color combinations for every single wire that's in the car. You open up a harness and you see a yellow wire with a black stripe. Well, you can come to your wiring schematic. Okay, yellow wire with a black stripe is left rear shock sensor. So stuff like that works out really well for serviceability later down the road. You wanna make changes to the car. You want to figure out where something's at you something new comes out that you want to add to the car you can immediately look at your pin map in the holly as well as the wiring schematic and see where you can add that extra sensor or what you can remove your old sensor where you need to go to remove the old sensor to replace it with some new sensor that you want to replace this is our leash electronics main power board and you guys may have seen a little bit of this in some of our other videos I use this board for almost every car that we build. And it has all of the headlight, tail light, turn signals all built into it. And then it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight relays, ignition, plus all these other relays that you can do different things in the car with. Now, my temporary deal here is I've just taken some tape and I've written on which one which relay does what, but we have stickers we have made for these that'll be, the final will be a nice little sticker that makes it look all nice and professional. This is the board for the trunk. Since this car has quite a bit of extra stuff going on, we need something even bigger than the, the street strip board. So this will be stuff like the rear fuel pump, the intercooler pump. This will be say the transmission cooler. Uh, this can be the air pump control for the, for the boost and the parachutes and all that stuff. And then we'll have one or two spares depending on any other thing we do back there. All right, so the last bit of our Leash Electronics goodies is our switch panel. And the mounts aren't here yet, but I ordered some mounts from them that I forgot to order when I ordered the switch panel. But they're gonna be roll bar clamps that'll mount it up above. Somebody's outside having fun. Oh, there we go. So they light up when you turn the ignition on. Got the main kill switch. So while this may light up, this will be, if this is not on, the car is not going to crank. 
and if the car is running it will shut the car off starter ignition turn the boost on street tune track tune or tune a tune b if we are testing and it spins the tires here we can turn the big big boy tune on it'll be a little bit spicier this is my cool down switch that i like to do all of the fans and water pumps water pump actually both water pumps all of that will be controlled automatically by the holly uh, this is a cool shirt system that is driver cooling and then this will be interior lights and then we've got you know low beam high beam and maybe it'll show may not show very well but these they get brighter when uh when the light switches are armed and then we also have a little toggle switch here for interior lights you know checking your time slip little things like that so on to more of the goodies we're using a motion raceworks drive shaft collar this will give us this clamps onto the drive shaft yoke and between this and this sensor and the trigger wheel this will give us rear wheel speed. For front wheel speed, I'm actually going to install this ABS tone ring onto the front hub and then use this sensor. This is a higher frequency sensor because there's a whole lot more teeth. And that's gonna be our front wheel speed sensor. And also from Low Dollar Motorsports, all these goodies. So this will be converter, charge pressure, and temperature. So this is a pressure and temperature switch. Same sensor, this one is a zero to 300. Same for fuel pressure. So we have two fuel pressure sensors, one for each system. We're also buying uh, the Deutsch connector, the sm my smaller Deutsch connector stuff I get from the low dollar for stuff like, these are the shock sensors. So this sensor is gonna be the front sensor. It's a half inch in diameter. This is a six inch travel. And what I plan to do is mount it, you know, mount it where the, there's a little bit of room on each end of it where I'm not using up the full travel. While the wheel may move eight inches, if we measure the shock travel at the middle of the control arm, that's only gonna move four inches. And then we can use math inside the ECU to transfer that into actual travel at the wheel. Or I can just program the sensor that half an inch of sensor travel is actually one inch of travel at the wheel itself. So it's just in how I program the sensor into the car. So for the back shock sensor, you can see it's a little bit beefier of a sensor. And that's primarily due because this is a, a more robust sensor. And if you haven't experienced radial tire, tire shake, it's very violent and everything gets hammered in the back of the car. And so we want to have a nice strong sensor back there. The front has only got to go up and down. This one's got to withstand shaking and getting beat up and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, same thing, got our oil pressure sensor from Low Dollar Motorsports. And also track temperature, which I plan to make this sensor where we can swivel it and say we want to get we want to get some track temp data and we want to get tire data. Well, we can just we can't do them both unless I add another one, which may happen. Depends on how sporty I'm feeling, and if I have room left on the inputs and outputs, I may not have room. Track temp or tire temp, depending on how we rotate the, sen the sensor. All right, so this nifty little sensor right here we picked up from Low Dollar is a laser proximity sensor. Lasers? It's not for my pet shark. We're going to be measuring the distance from the frame or the sensor to the ground. And the idea there is if the car starts to come up, once it passes a certain point, I will very aggressively pull power out of the engine with timing and or boost to try and bring the front end back down and hopefully not have any major parts damaging sky wheelies. 
So that's an exciting sensor we're going to be using on mullet. All right, so I touched on the injector harness plugs that I'm going to be using. And those are going to be mounted right here behind the intake manifold. Somewhere, somewhere in here. We'll play with it and figure out where exactly we want to do it yet, depending on, I've got a, I'm going to mock up some fuel lines uh, to make sure that we everything is easy to work on. And like I said, we got these from Wirecare. My larger Deutsch connectors I get from wirecare.com. And for those of you shopping Deutsch connectors, make sure you get the ones, I'm not sure how good this will show up on my GoPro. Make sure you get it with the machined pin. It's a much better quality connector. And also buy, buy some good quality crimpers. These are adjustable here for how much the jaws crimp. You can kind of see in there, there's, there's some teeth in there. Really, really good crimp. Now you can crimp too hard. So you can see it's got a nifty little dial here to where you can set the amount of gap between the teeth when it all comes together. Good tools, pays to have good tools. We're also using Holly's ECU pin crimpers for when we have to add any, any, extra, any extra wires to the harness. So the last piece of the wiring puzzle, <laughs> aside from a whole lot of time, is this nifty firewall connector that we picked up from HCR Innovations. Devin does a lot of neat, very neat wiring jobs. And I've talked with him through the years about some of his practices and he does some really nice wiring jobs and decided to do, do this project like this. But all of the engine sensors, the coils, everything will be run through here. And this will be on the firewall. Put this up. Twist. It's all connected. Need to pull the engine out. Take everything loose. Leave the harness on the engine. Pop it out. Good to go. So how do I know which wire is going to which connector? Which part of the car? All that other stuff. Well, that brings us to one of the most time-consuming parts of a wiring project, and that is the planning stage. This is how I do things. I've got my engine plug here. It's going to have all of these. I've got 55 available terminals on this connector. So all of this is going to be in that. At the lower side of the firewall on the passenger side, I've got all of these wires coming through. So this will be like for all the stuff on the top of the engine. This connector will have a lot of chassis stuff, but it'll also have like the starter, um, the starter activation wire, the cam and crank sensor will be in this. So I don't have to break those. I'm not a big fan of breaking those if I don't have to. Uh, the laser ride height harness, passenger side O2 comes out of that side. So there's all of those wires. Well, now we've got the transmission harness. And then the harness that's going to the back of the car. And then we've got our front light harness and headlight harness, which will also have the outside air temp sensor. Yes, I have a, temp, a sensor that I wire just to monitor the outside air temp. So it's always in the data of every run. So we can go back and look at the data log from any run and see what the air, air temperature was that day. We've got our harness that's going to be going to the shifter, the steering wheel slash dash dash bar harness, and the you know the dash itself, the screen harness, and I always mount the the G meter usually up on the dash bar, so that gets running that harness. All these different things. The the driver side O2 sensor is going to run across the dash bar and over to that side of the car, and now we've got the switch panel or the yeah the switch panel wiring and which number wires they are and then some of my notes on what i'm doing with the relay board 
and that's it so beyond all of the paperwork i go before i run a wire in the car i go over and i populate the all of the inputs all of the outputs in the holly and then i populate the pin map so that i know if i can do and if i have room to add the sensors and the outputs that i need to add to make the car work as you might imagine this car is more complicated than most you know if you got just a real simple race car you don't need turn signals and brake lights and high beams and low beams and park lights and you don't need a radio system to communicate with your co-pilot and listen to your tunes and talk to your other teammates in Ruby and the nail truck and Leroy. But with mullet, we're putting it all in there. And about the only thing I don't think the car, oh, it's even gonna, it's gonna have power windows, which that's another module that I've ordered from Leash that I don't have here yet. But, so we got power windows, we got the interior lights, all this stuff you don't need with race cars, like hardcore race only cars. So because we want everything to function on Leroy and, and for it to function well, you know, we're really taking a lot of the time to plan this stuff out and make it work. And I think this is one of my best tech tips when it comes to wiring is to plan the entire car out before you start wiring the car and don't just plan it and start wiring plan it look it over draw out where your wires are going to go how many wires you're going to have in a bundle so each bundle in this car will be heat shrinked and routed by itself down through the car and then when it gets back to where it's closer to its termination point it'll split out and go to the different um, sensors or accessories that it's turning on or off plan it out draw it out think about it for a couple of days think about where you may want to add some stuff in later down the road i usually only run one uh, rear shock sensor and one front shock sensor but i'm going to wire the car to have all four on it maybe they get added later down the road i haven't seen the need for all four on the cars that we've been doing. But, so I'm gonna wire it like I've done other cars. If we decide later down the road we wanna add them, all we have to do is mount the sensor to the car and terminate four wires and it's done. I always try to think things through and then think them through again because you may find that you need to make some small tweaks to make the project better in the end. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. A lot of talking. But hopefully you guys got something out of it. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one.